Hello and welcome to your weekly horoscope for week commencing the 23rd of May. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the broad strands to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then give in great detail each of the 12 zodiac signs that you can relate to, the key dates and influences for each one. Now, on the 29th of April, Mercury, the planet of communication, moved into the sign of Gemini. But on the 10th of May, around two weeks ago, it went into a retrograde. And as we start this week, Mercury retreats back within that retrograde into the sign of Taurus. Now, Mercury is the ruler of Gemini, so even in the retrograde, and of course it's been in a recently sparkling alliance with the flirtatious Venus, there have been possibilities. A lot of communications, a lot of ideas. I think Mercury ver reversing back into Taurus asks us to get really grounded about what some of those ideas may be and try to get uh, a more tangible idea of how we can make things work in a uh, really practical way. So an opportunity, I think, to still grapple with those finances, especially with the recent cost of living uh, increases and where we can squeeze a bit more from our budget, Mercury's going to help us to think about those things. But when it comes to thinking, late last week, there was a quarter moon in the dreamy sign of Pisces and that squared the sun in the sign of Gemini. So a little bit of gossip could be doing the rounds this week. We should definitely not necessarily just believe at face value something we're told, particularly within our neighborhood. There could also be some uh, potential for misunderstandings with siblings. Now, this is a really important week in so many ways, but I think mostly because Mars on Tuesday returns to one of its two home zones, but of course, it is the only ruling planet of the sign of Aries. And that's where it gets back to on Tuesday for a six week stay. But it immediately forges an absolutely fantastic link with Jupiter. Now, Jupiter, of course, is the planet of expansion. So now Mars returns to Aries. We have Jupiter, the planet of uh, growth and potentially of good luck. And we also have Venus in the sign of Aries too. So the potential for initiative and drive is very strong. When Mars and Jupiter get together, it can give us uh, an even greater sense of determination and thrust. But we also must remember that the element of the sign of Aries is fire. And Jupiter can, you know, see us be a little bit overconfident in some ways. So it's going to be important to keep you know, grounded, and perhaps Mercury in that retrograde in Taurus can help this, especially where we're wanting to bring a much more excitement and action to a situation that may have stalled. But you know, it's not just Mars that's forging a gorgeous link with Jupiter, because the Sun is from Monday to Friday in a sextile, and this is one of the luckiest aspects that you can get in astrology. So if our ideas are strong, our determination and spirit to see them through, that energy in Aries, particularly with Jupiter, that gives us a great opportunity to move forwards at some pace. So something that has been a little bit stuck could gain traction, and that's really exciting. Now, ironically, Venus forges a very positive link with Saturn this week, a very stabilizing angle, so this is, if you like, Venus in Aries, technically detrimented, but it's in a sextile with the co-ruler of Aquarius. So that's very much about the collective, the group, friends, if you like. Venus is about taking in the sign of Aries. It's about maybe just going for it a little bit. But if there is something that's working out well in a relationship, it could actually be very stable. The irony is that Venus is also in a square with Pluto from Monday through to the end of the week. And any relationship that is leveraged, so where 
uh, perhaps someone is promising us a, a really amazing deal around a job or perhaps it could be that someone tries to spoil us big time if they're trying to get to know us you know almost like being over generous it's not to say that there's anything sinister with these tactics but we just must be aware that Pluto is about power and Venus is about money as well as potentially sex so you know the inference is clear Saturn can bring stability but Pluto can bring some uh, leverage so just be conscious of that but I think the key this week is to cut through the swirling mist that is that quarter moon because there could be some mixed signals it's not just Mercury's retrograde and Mercury's retrograde in Taurus is most certainly asking us to scrutinize the details of things in a very exacting way now if you uh, are new to my channel I'd be honored if you would subscribe I'm getting very close to that hundred thousand mark all the illnesses I've had in recent years last 10 years catching up now so we'd greatly appreciate if you would click or tap on the bell notification symbol if you would like to ascend above this broadcast if you give me three pieces of personal information time date and place of birth I can share with you an astrological roadmap that can guide the rest of your life and also my special package of 30% off a character analysis for the next 12 months. No two charts are the same. Please see the link beneath this video. But please stay with me now for your individual zodiac forecast. So Virgo, your weekly forecast for week commencing the 23rd of May sees your ruling planet reversing on the first day Monday into your sister sign of Taurus. So the 10th house where it was with Gemini is very much about how we interact with the world at large. You still have the sun there so I feel that the next few weeks is going to be an important time for your career, your role in life or raising your profile in some kind of way. So Mercury's retrograde into the ninth house could be a more philosophical slant comes into your thinking. For example, if in any way that you need to explore the rights and wrongs of a situation, this could be food for thought. You may even find yourself talking to some kind of professional advisor, whether it's a business guru, whether it's a, a, a lawyer, or even an accountant, because their higher knowledge could inform some of the decisions that you're going to make. The ninth house can also be about higher education and of course about travel. So is there the need in some way to break out? Something may need a further period of reflection, but by the 3rd of, uh, of June, you will get greater clarity. In fact, by the 4th, you may get that letter, the contract, something that's been important to you will be clarified by that point and you will be delighted. But of course, Mars, the planet of passion, is also on the march this week and moves into one of its two home zones, of Aries. Here is the dominant influence and its combination with Jupiter is superb if you are a more entrepreneurial type of Virgo or you want to do more with your resources. So that may mean moving things around a little bit because Jupiter can be about flexibility. So the combination with Mars can give you more desire to improve your long-term financial situation but the eighth house can also be about intimacy. So if you're not in a romantic relationship and that's something that's important to you, that may be something that comes up in your consciousness a lot, particularly because Venus is in your eighth house as well and in a square to Pluto, which is in your sector of romance. So if you're wanting that connection to someone, whether it is some kind of fleeting, uh, romantic uh, a, a dalliance or it is something more long-term and more enduring the excitement of passion could really call out to you now Saturn of course is the planet of resistance and boundaries and that is in your sixth house which is very much to do with the order of your life so that side of you that can be very productive by being very organized is actually benefited by 
uh, Saturn's transit through this part of your situation. But because it forges a very constructive link to Venus, and Venus can be about money, your attention to detail could actually pay off well for you around finance. But then if you are that person that sees an opportunity and it does require a, a little bit of self-confidence to really go for it, the fact that the sun is in an amazing sextile to Jupiter, the sun in your 10th house of success, Jupiter in your 8th house of finance and earnings potentially, that can give you a lot of get-go. So please don't let that Mercury retrograde be in your ruling planet, dominate your thinking too much, but I think it is very important to carefully scrutinize any paperwork, documents or contracts and get that professional advice if you should need it.